So uh, I, would, I would talk today of a border, a specific border, the border that is enacted by bureaucracies. And in particular, I'm questioning transformations of border control involving private actors. And uh, I'm, this analysis in particular brings insights on the ways in which private actors impact and help shape policy processes. So the object of this presentation is the everyday practicing of the Schengen border that occurs by delivering one of the European um, immigration control tools, that is the Schengen visa. Um, because Schengen states have been outsourcing to private service providers several tasks linked to the visa application process, um, this everyday practicing of borders is carried out by state and non-state actors. Uh, so I'm focusing not only on street-level bureaucracies, but widely on street-level organizations. Um, I'm focusing on the implementation as a policy process, as a distinct phase of the policy process, a phase where um, policy outcomes are produced and uh, frontline workers give practical meaning to policies. Um, outsourcing visa services is understood as part of the more general tendencies of neoliberal states embracing new public management strategies. And as Girodon and ha La have stated, shifting sovereignty outwards um, towards uh, private actors is a way for um, is a way to be for states to be more sovereign in the sense of being more capable to govern. Um, this analysis focuses in particular on the visa policy implementation carried out by Schengen consulates and visa application centers in Morocco and is based on in-depth fieldwork that I've carried out at the consulate of Italy, Belgium and France in Casablanca and at the relative uh, visa application centers. Because um, we, by delivering uh, Schengen visas, boarding occurs away from the edges of the territory before would-be travelers actually reach the Schengen territory. Uh, the visa policy has, has always uh, been understood as a strategy of remote control, according to the term used by Zolberg. Um, so let's uh, visualize these borders in Casablanca. Uh, so we can see uh, the three consulates in this map and um, the, the visa application centers. Uh, this, the visa application centers are located in areas that are far from the city center where consulates are located in one of the most rich, one of the richest neighbors in Casablanca. Um, and uh, so we, we can see the visa application center of Belgium and Spain that was before also the visa application center of Italy that now skipped to another private service provider. Uh, so the visa application center of Italy nowadays is located uh, ironically in a, um, in a neighborhood that was before a neighborhood of Italian emigrants in Morocco, Mer Sultan. Um, so this is, these are the, these displaced borders in Casablanca. We can consider this board, we can consider these borders uh, this consulate as borderlands also because of the reasons uh, Ruben was mentioning before, uh, because consulates are surrounded by uh, a matrix of legal, illegal, licit, illicit activities, economic activities that uh, greases the engines of international migration, to put it with the Ruben words. Um, so I will. The, main, the aim of this presentation is threefold. Uh, I will first tracing the processes leading to public-private governance as an emerging mode of Schengen border management. Second, I will bring insights to unravel why visa services outsourcing uh, is become routinized for Schengen states. And for, uh, third, I will question how uh, public-private cooperation changes the conditions in which the visa policy is implemented, therefore changing the visa policy outcomes. Because shifting modes of regulation involving private actors is not a natural development, I will put forward how this new form of the Schengen visa policy occurs. 
Um, so there's there's a process of um, of a, of institutional legitimation because at the beginning outsourcing for Schengen states we we found trace of the outsourcing in um, a uh, explanatory memorandum where outsourcing was presented as a way to reduce costs linked to collecting biometrics for the visa information system, and um, but it it was not. Legal. When the, the European Commission found out that Schengen states was already outsourcing their visa services, uh, the, the Schengen states had to, to ju justify their choice before the European Commission because the, the legal issue raised by the outsourcing was that the the, the visa f the fee linked to the to the serv to the service of the private service provider raised the cost of the, the visa that is fixed to 60 euro uh, through a uh, European uh, through a, uh, Council decision. Uh, so Schengen states had to justify and the legal basis for the outsourcing was provided ex post um, through the visa code. So when the outsourcing was already, um, was already uh, practiced. So when it's inter interesting to see how Schengen states justified the outsourcing, and they justified it um, uh, on grounds uh, related to improved state efficacy and eff effectiveness. Uh, so um, they want because they associate because of the virtues we uh, states associate to new public management strategies. Um, in particular, uh, the problems associated to consulates dealing, um, in implementing the visa policy uh, was the fact that productivity was low, uh, the, the service for applicants was bad in terms of treatment, also the lines, the dignity of applicants, um, so um, also the, 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 the classical uh, criticism against consulates is corruption. So on the grounds of, of all this criticism, uh, they justify the outsourcing. So um, state administration represented the problem this new public management strategy has to solve. Um, in this sense, new public management strategies re-legitimize really uh, the state, as pointed out by Philippe Bezès when he um, analyzed the reforms of French administration. So, the two main serv private service providers of Schengen states are VFS Global and TLS Contact. And it's in, in, these are old companies that found new markets. Uh, and they, they were born, actually, um, as a consequence of a casual effect and as a consequence of an, an, um, the encounter with state actors. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview uh, two key figures of these uh, companies that explained me how uh, companies were born. Uh, and uh, they were born locally, at the beginning locally in India for VFS Global and uh, in China for TLS Contact. VFS Global is um, a subsidiary of Kwoni Travel Group that is one of the main um, uh, travel uh, agencies, tour operators, global tour operators, and TLS Contact is part of a French company of call centers and um, uh, uh, client relations. Uh, so what is interesting that uh, the, how did this diffusion work? Uh, because this diffusion was so rapid, uh, and uh, it, it, the diffusion um, occurs local context by local context, state by state, region by region. And um, at the basis, there's a imitation and copying, and uh, doing as the other do, does, uh, as the other do, uh, as a just legitimization of the choice of outsourcing. So if we are more than one that choose the outsourcing, it's more le legitimized. And the prime mover is crucial. At a lo in a local context, the prime mover that choose to outsource is, is crucial because uh, there's a diplomatic concerns about 
the implementation of the visa policy. What I term as the foreign affairs dimension of the visa policy implementation. Uh, so the prime mover is crucial, the other will follow. And the, 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 the companies, the private service providers are aware of this mimetic, mimetic effect. So they, they, they want to settle in a country, but they, the important is to settle in a country. But the, because the, the other will come afterwards. The case of Morocco that I cannot detail here um, uh, follows this pattern of diffusion, but I have no time to, to talk of this here. It was uh, something that Laurence was mentioning before, because there's this diffusion of, um, of circulation of practical knowledge. Uh, and, and this is quite important also from a theoretical point of view because uh, it's a contribution to, from a micro perspective, to policy diffusion theory uh, to see how diffusion actually works. And um, so, and this, these are patterns of transnational practice making more than transnational rule making uh, that goes well beyond European member states. So, but why outsourcing visa services? Um, first of all, there are multiple causes. Um, and first of all, we can say that the, 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 the incentive to cooperate for uh, private service providers is the business itself. Because this is also a paradoxical case where the, the, the person who pays for the service, the visa applicant, is not the customer, is not the real customer, because diplomatic missions are the real customer of private service providers. Uh, so the, 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 it's a zero cost for governments, so it's, it's very, a very profitable solution. Um, it is a cost-effective strategy also for the VIS and for biometrics to, or to uh, buy the machines. Uh, for example, Thales is one of the is providing these machines to, and um, do what the others do. It's another causes. And uh, what is very very strong that that uh, emerged from my fieldwork is that. Um, this is a way of outsourcing a bureaucratic dirty work because uh, dealing with applicants, with clients of bureaucracies, it's always, uh, it's, it's better to never deal with, with persons. So it was recognized widely uh, from actors in the field as a form of uh, uh, being more calm, uh, peaceful, uh, we don't have all these persons around, the lines around consul consulates that are very bad for the image of liberal countries. Um, so this is, this is what emerged very strongly from my, from my field work. And uh, also, for example, the training of the, of the workers of private service providers is based on dealing with tension generating situation, handle unhappy clients. It's not based on knowing uh, the on administrative knowledge. Uh, so um, so I, I think outsourcing is uh, very, very efficient in redirecting the burden of the implementation of a policy that generates blame and complex dynamics. So it's more a strategy, it's not only a cost-effective strategy, but especially a blame avoidance strategy according to the terms of Weber, of Kent Weber. Um, now I will, I will focus, because I don't have much, much time, uh, I, want to, I want to focus on the ways in which the implementing conditions uh, change, and, and especially in two uh, developments that are relevant for agents decision making and policy outcomes. The first one is that uh, when a visa application center deal with visa applicant, uh, the agents that have to take decisions on applications never face applicants anymore. So the, the, the migratory risk, the assessment of the migratory risk is no more based on face-to-face -face interactions. Um, it's much more based on documents. And this has several effects that I cannot mention here. Um, and one 
one, one, the strongest effect uh, of this visa services outsourcing is what I call the missing document mechanism. And I will let the Consul General, one of these consulates, explain the mechanism. He says, the only issue with the outsourcing is to have a completed file. By outsourcing, an uncompleted file will be directly refused. They will tell us, this is completed, this is uncompleted. We will not handle this anymore. We won't deal with such issue. We don't outsource to have more work to do. This is the reality of the outsourcing that nobody understands. This is very, very this summarizes the issues at stake, at stake because, um, first of all, this is the less acknowledged uh, effect of the outsourcing um, because um, nobody sees this. And by administrative means, policy changes in not transparent ways, challenging public scrutiny. So it's, it's quite true that nobody understands uh, this, this reality. And uh, um, the outsourcing visa services imply avoiding discretionary power for the stage of paperwork intake. Basically, if a document is missing in the application, who, have to deal, who has to deal with this? Not the consulate, because otherwise it implies follow-up procedures that complicates the, 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 the visa application process the outsourcing is supposed to solve. So, in this, when, if, if a document is missing, uh, the window clerk has to convince the applicant to withdraw his application. Uh, otherwise, it will complicate all the, pro all the process. But how to convince the applicant? By giving him the responsibility, by saying, OK, you can submit the application like this, but it will probably be refused. So uh, in this way, another uniform decision making uh, not uniform form of decision making occur because if uh, if, a do if a file is uncompleted, it will be refused, and the responsibility skips from the consulate, so from the pub bureaucracy to the private service providers, from the private service providers to the applicant, and this is a case of administrative ex exclusion um, defined as non participation attributable to organizational factors. And it, this is a way to uniformize, uh, to homogenize the uh, implementing practices of Schengen states. So private actors play a crucial role in the making of the Schengen era because they are a strategic political resource, a cost-effective strategy, but especially a blame avoidance strategy because of all the diplomatic concerns linked to the visa application process that have been always overlooked because analysis uh, on, on visas usually uh, focus on the migration control part that exists, but uh, all this, from a grounded research, these diplomatic concerns emerge, uh, and so the visa application process uh, is very, very affected by these diplomatic concerns that the outsourcing solves in a certain way. And uh, private taxes are also a factor converging Schengen visa policy implementing practices more than hard law acts uh, that, um, that regulate the visa policy. Because this is from an organizational perspective. 